Hello, I'm Dr. Sri Banerjee, core faculty for the College of Health Sciences and Public Policy at Walden University. And in this segment, I'll be talking about um, lead linked to inflammation in children. Why is this important? Well, um, it's extremely important for us to understand um, there some early warning signs as to how lead is affecting children. Now, uh, cognitive sort of um, effects of lead have been documented through research, but I wanted to uh, look a little bit deeper in, in, in this. So uh, this has to do with um, Heart and Diabetes um, Heart and Diabetes Conference uh, that took place earlier this year. So I wanted to share some of the findings. And the major findings here is, is, is that um, in, a, in a nationally representative setting, um, individuals that had higher lead levels um, actually had also elevated um, ele elevated inflammatory um, markers such as C-reactive protein. Um, so the lead levels were considered high um, at greater than two, uh, about two, and then moderately elevated is about 1.10 to 1.89, um, and then anything that's uh, greater than 1.09 um, is also included. So again, C-reactive protein was there, but that was in lead, urinary lead levels that I was reading out to you. So then you have C-reactive protein, of course, I told you about that. Um, it's an inflammatory biomarker that's measured by uh, latex nephilometry. Um, and this was, of course, uh, run with complex samples, um, regression analysis. Uh, in this case, I usually report hazard ratios, but in this case, we have um, a odds ratio. And that's not, this is because it's not longitudinal. So the odds ratio uh, was much, but was higher in age-adjusted um, elevated lead, um, the odds ratio was higher. Um, so it was 2.08. And then um, adjusted moderately um, elevated, so that's not as high. Uh, so in, in terms of what is causing inflammation or what is associated with inflammation, um, it's actually um, both types of lead, uh, especially the um, elevated lead um, over here. When it's high, then it's actually affecting uh, the amount of inflammatory biomarkers. So I hope that made sense. Um, what I'm trying to find is ways that we can early uh, detect um, lead um, within the bloodstream and within the urine so that we don't get to a point where um, children are getting exposed to lead. Uh, so of course, I'm a higher lead levels and uh, were found to be significantly associated with inflammation. So what do we do to stop this? We have to start uh, looking at inflammatory biomarkers early on. Again, uh, wait till adulthood. And um, I think C-reactive protein uh, requires more understanding. Um, I wrote my dissertation on this and uh, allows for one inflammatory biomarker to at least predict. And C-reactive protein does that. It predicts the ability, the probability of C, uh, of cardiovascular disease so much so that some of the risk score indicators, uh, like 10 year risk of cardiovascular disease, so much so that uh, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's a um, single type of uh, C-reactive protein um, is a single type of biomarker that predicts um, MIs and myocardial infarctions and other cardiovascular um, associated diseases. Um, so what do we do again? Um, we have to keep uh, keep an eye open, uh, conduct surveillance, and actively look for C-reactive uh, protein in the general population. Thank you for listening.